guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dwarven Beer Fest, and it is a two to four player game. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I don't know, I guess 13 and up, I suppose, even though it has drinking in it, so that's up to you, I guess. It's by Triple Ace Games, and it is a game in which you are playing as dwarves trying to quaff as much as possible. And that means to drink. And if you can drink really well, they'll basically become, you'll become a renowned dwarf, and your objective is to continue drinking in this push your luck style game until basically last call hits and when that happens that's going to end the round you'll score up all of the beers and whatnot that you've been drinking throughout the night and whoever has done the best at drinking is going to win the game has a lot of choice as well as action cards different types of dine how and when you want to drink and of course why i mean why you want to drink really matters, right? <laughs> Hopefully it's to have fun. But anyway, that's the basic idea of the game, Dwarven Beer Fest. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, show you how to play the game, and then I'll tell you what I think about this Dwarven drinking game. So here is Dwarven Beer Fest and everything presented in the game. So let's go ahead and talk about all the different cards. Uh, first, you're going to be getting this deck of cards here, which are basically action cards. And each action card is going to have a time when you can play it. There's four different times you can play, whether it's during the order, right before you roll dice, uh, after the die has been rolled, and then finally the very end step of your turn, as well as specific action. This means to discard the card, and it tells you what it does along with a nice little picture there. Every player is going going to get a dwarf and three of these cards. The dwarves here are basically very good drinkers and they are going to have a favorite type of beverage and whenever you gather that beverage you'll get a specific type of die as opposed to the other one. You're going to have uh, two or three different areas to place cards. First of all when you drink you're going to be choosing to play cards up here and then then you're going to have the quaffing area, your renowned area, and this is over here the flask area. In the game you're basically flipping those cards over hoping to drink as best you can and if you successfully drink them you'll put them in your quaff and then after you go back to being sober you'll move these cards over to your renown pile there are certain times you'll be able to place cards in your flask area which will go in the back here which will let you basically be able to drink those cards at certain points and sometimes even put them in your renown you want as many cards in here as possible the game is going to be uh, utilizing these two steps here you can either choose to drink normally or you can choose to go berserk regardless whatever one you choose is which one you're going to have to stick with throughout the game uh, for that, that round for the game and you'll get to use these specific two die unless of course you get your special drink which will show you up here these all these different types of drinks for these specific dwarves if you get your special drink you'll be able to use this die as opposed to the yellow die that is available sometimes you'll get drunk and that will help flip when this happens you're basically going to be eh, a little bit stronger but also a little more likely to fail and when you fail you're going to have to lose the cards from here into the discard pile if you succeed though you'll get to move them if you try and sober up sobering up is simply just flipping over like this and if you're drunk and and you fail you're going to lose your cards here but you're still going to flip over so you'll go back to being a little bit sober maybe that's because you uh, had a little uh, uh, mouth expulsion perhaps i don't know uh, you're also gonna get this deck of cards and these basically are brews they're different types of brews and they tell you the amount of uh, points or uh, number related to how many you need to have in order to successfully drink these cards certain will get ones will give you bonus points other ones potentially might make you instantly drunk and then some of them will have burp values having the more, most of these at the end of the game is going to be very very valuable because you'll get bonus points and they will also tell you uh what type of drink it is so specifically if i had oh i don't know let's see if i can find one here uh we'll look for this guy's here uh it's somewhere in here this one right here this is his favorite type of drink so if he gets this he'll get to use a special ability power uh, when you set the game up, depending on if you're playing two or more players, in a two-player game, you'll shuffle this deck and you'll keep this card out, which is your last order card. And in a two-player game, you're going to put 24 cards at the bottom and place this on top and place the rest of the deck up. And if you're playing with more, it's going to be just 12 cards in the bottom here. But because we'll play with two, we'll set this just like this and place it just like that. All the die are going to go in this beautiful ale, uh, little ale canister here, and you'll set it aside. And because we're playing with just two, we'll set these aside. So with two players now this player's got his three action cards and he has space for all the different areas he's going to be potentially drinking in we're then going to have this other player over here and we have our action cards and our drink cards set aside to begin the game select a specific player and have them choose one of the two types we'll have this guy go, we'll have this guy go first so he's going to choose to just drink normally during this phase he could choose to either drink normally he could play one of his action cards that has this specific red border here 
Uh, and he can do either or or even both if he wants. This card here says, if your favorite drink is on an opponent's tray, you can take it and place it in your tray. This one over here says, if an opponent's favorite drink is in your tray, you can use the D8 to score, which is useful. And then this one says, if your opponent's drink is on your tray, use the eight die to score. So you have potentially some useful cards here, but none quite so useful right now. So we'll go ahead and wait for that. But he'll simply drink normally. So he's gonna go choose to just take a card from the top of this deck here and place it over here. That is a card that's going to require at least three points in order to successfully quaff that card. It also means uh, this card can get, I guess, discarded in certain ways. There's certain like different things that can happen to these drink cards. But uh, there's also <laughs> certain amounts of uh, certain colors here. And if you can gather certain colors, you're going to score points, which I'll talk about at the end of the game. So he's chosen that, a basic drink. And then now it's this guy's turn. And he will also choose a basic drink, I suppose. So we'll go ahead and flip this over here. And this one here says he's going to go drunk regardless this round. So he's going to have to need a, he need a four here, but he's going to be able to gather certain points and get this burp here, which is nice. Now he can choose to pass, play a card, or he can simply go ahead and go again. So he'll go one more time. Now that's three and three, which is six. So not too bad. And then this player here will go ahead and go again. And that's a four and four. Neither of them are his favorite drink. We don't have any of their favorite drinks out, in fact. So it's not this player's turn. He's like, I'm going to actually stop here. I want six. And he says, oh, I'm going to stop as well. In which case, this is going to roll. So before this rolls, though, players can choose to play any cards that are this little symbol here. This little red one indicates that you can go ahead and play this beforehand. This is to swap a drink on your tray for one in your renown pile before drinking. And this one says to re-roll, oh no, this one's not going to work. Um, this one here says both D6s are the highest D6 for you. So maybe he'll use that one there. Set these aside. Now after that, now you're going to roll the die for all players. And once all the die for all players are rolled, then you're going to add up the totals for each different type of dwarf. And in this case, they're both going to be using the same die. This one's using the six-sided die blue and yellow, and this case as well for that guy. But he gets to use the, both the D6s are the highest value. So in this case, he gets a five, and as opposed to getting the three, he gets another five, which is ten. Uh, eight is less than ten, so these guys are going to go into his uh, quaffing area, and that's going to help him score, hopefully, into the round area at the end of the, before he ever tries to sober up, I guess. And this player over here is going to be using the five and the three, which is more than six. It's eight. So these will also go over here. And in this case, uh, this player, unfortunately, is going to have to go drunk. That means he's going to go ahead and flip over because he has these little symbols on these guys here. After that, the play will then go ahead and pass, but not before if somebody wants to play a card with this specific symbol with a highlight around it. There are certain action cards that will help you do that throughout the game. And you're going to basically go back and forth doing this. And that's the idea, right? So on the next turn, this player could do something interesting. You could try and sober up, and you'll have to be using these smaller die, or you can simply keep drinking. And when you're drunk and you keep drinking, you're going to be able to use this better die than a six-sided. And in this case, because he's sober, he can actually try and go berserk. But going berserk means he will actually have to uh, draw two cards. But I guess it's this guy's turn first, so he'll just go ahead and try and sober up. So he'll take one. This guy's going to try and go berserk, so he's going to go ahead and flip over two. And then it's going to be like this, this, this guy's turn again. Maybe he'll go for mm, one more. We'll fight it. Okay, not so bad. And him, he's just going to go out. He's going to go for two more. And that is a lot of points there now. So he's got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen total. Does he have anything he can actually play? He does, I believe. If he has a favorite drink somewhere, he doesn't. If your opponent's favorite drink is in front of you, there it is. So now he can use the special yellow die as opposed to the normal six-sided yellow die. In which case, we're going to go ahead and roll. Oh, no, there's two. Come on, the rest of you. All right, here we go. And now we'll go ahead and check and see. So in this case, he's going to be using this one, which is a five, and this one here, which is a four, which is nine, which is not enough. So these will actually be discarded, and he's going to go ahead and turn over. Poor him, no good for him. This player here is going to be using this one, which is a four, and this one, which is a four as well, which is eight, which is enough for five. That means these are going to go over here, these will go over here, and he's going to be able to flip over back to his normal side. And that's the idea. You're going to keep playing, utilizing these cards here, trying to remain sober while taking cards from your quaff area, putting them to your renown area. And at certain points, maybe if you fail, for instance, you can discard one of these action cards from your hand to place one of your drinking cards that was going to originally go and get discarded and put it into your flask area. And the game is going to end. And when that happens, it's when that last card gets flipped over. It's that last 
orders card, so all these cards have been utilized and they're either in the discard pile or in your renowned or even in your quaff area. This will signify the last turn of the game, and if this deck runs out, that is going to uh, freeze and end the game as well. And players are going to tally up scores, and they're going to tally up scores based on their renowned area. So if in this case, these players have these cards in here, you're going to take all of these cards and you're going to add them up. I believe you'll also add these guys as well, so you actually put these guys into your area as well. And the way that works is by scoring. So the first thing is for every one of the dwarf's favorite drinks, that's going to score them plus one points for each complete set of three different wines, which are going to look like if let me see if I can find any wine cards in here like these. There's three different colors there. It shows you right here. They'll score points as well as I think it's one point for each card as well as the longest burp. So in this case, he's got one, two, three burps. And this guy over here has one, two, two burps. So he would score the bonus for the most burps. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game of Dwarven Beer Fest is the winner, Gitra Grogon. So some caveats for Dwarven Beer Fest. And the first one is you can only have one card represented in your flask. And if you fail to quaff from here to here, you can choose one of those cards to go down here. Additionally, if your number value is higher than your drink value, and that number value is less than or equal to whatever drink you have here. So for instance, if you roll a 10 and you have a total of seven here, that means you have three left. And if this card is a three, that can actually go in to your quaff along with the top cards. So that's how you're gonna gather cards from your flask. At the end of every single round, you're also gonna draw an additional action card. But on top of that, there are different types of beer cards that you will be utilizing that different abilities, which I didn't go into too much detail, like Dragon Breath here. I talked about how if there's that symbol there, you're going to be able to get drunk because that is a requirement for quaffing the card. The top left is going to signify that is a drink card, and the top right is going to signify you get a point for putting it in your renown or quaff at the end of the game. If at any point in time both of your die are equal, regardless of what number die they are, you can actually quaff this even if you fail to quaff. The bottom left is the number value that you need to hit along with any cumulative numbers that you've added with the drinks that you're choosing to pull in. And then down here in the middle is going to signify that this card specifically is going to cost two less if it's at the end of a ring of drinks. So if it's the last thing, like a chaser, which actually it is called a chaser. So thematically that makes sense. The far bottom right, this thing means that when you, it's not discarding, it is when you quaff this successfully, you'll get to actually draw a action card. So that is another way of doing it. Uh, this one here means you get to use this specific yellow die as opposed to the six sided die, as well as an action card. This one here means the value of this card is equal to the four sided die. And then this one here is a wine card of yellow type. There are three different colors, and if you get all three, you will score an additional point for each set you have, either in your quaff and or in your renown pile at the end of the game. In addition, you can also get an action card from this card as well. There might be a few others I'm missing, but that's pretty much how they all work. Remember the different action cards too. Some of them are going to signify to use before the roll, during which you're drinking and ordering drinks. Right before you roll, during the roll because it might have you change a die to one side or switch die in some way and then the final thing is at the end so this is the end one which i didn't even get an example for so i'll do that now cheers each player transfers two cards from their quaff pile which is their left hand side to their renown pile which is the right hand side so everybody gets two of those cards in the safety of the renown pile because the renown pile is the safest space the quaff pile you can lose those cards and this kind of helps everybody but specifically it might help you more and that is pretty much all i had to say about the game uh, two critiques really quickly the first one is do not forget to flip over your card from drunk to sober or sober to drunk re regarding whether or not you successfully went sober from drunk or if you you failed to quaff when you are sober as well as if you fail when you are drunk to quaff uh, you're going to still flip over you just have to discard all the cards in your quaffed area which is your left hand side it gives you a little reprieve by also still making you lose points so be careful do not get too drunk because you want to get drunk just not too drunk in this game another thing to note is to remember you're rolling all these die at the same time for every round and if uh, you, when you roll these guys, you're, they're simply going to be all laid out and everybody uses them cumulatively, uh, separately, but cumulatively. So all the, all the dies are rolled out. You might use two of the six-sided and another player might use a six-sided and an eight-sided die. It's going to be based on the cards and how you choose to play them. 
Dwarven Beer Fest is a fun push your luck game with a lot of management. You need to decide how and when you want to drink and when you need to slow down. It has a very good theme as far as it goes because it shows you that if you drink too much, you're going to suffer penalties, but it is always fun to drink to a certain point without going overboard. And I guess that probably is some kind of moral lesson or or not, I, I don't know. But it is really thematic in that way. You drink, you get drunk, oops, you got a little too drunk, I try to sober up a little bit, and if you don't, oh no, you've lost all of your cards, that's no good. And of course, if you do it correctly, you're gonna be doing a balancing act. There are the action cards that will influence how the rounds go, as well as what die you're gonna be utilizing. You always wanna drink your favorite drinks, because it's always gonna benefit you, it'll give you bonus points. Choosing to drink the wine combos is good as well, as long as you can remember what you have in your announcement five pile you don't want to have five greens and nothing else because that's only going to score you five points if you had five cards and three of them were a one was a yellow one was a green and one was a red that'll score you an additional point for six which can make or break it the final thing which is the burp it tells you in the rule book here somewhere what the burp gives you i know that it gives you some kind of bonus points or something like that it says yeah you get six extra points if you have the longest burp and so that's that's probably pretty good and the card's value is going to be based on the difficulty in order to quaff them Overall, this is a fun push your luck game. As long as you don't mind something that's a little more in depth than some of the more simple ones that involve going into the cave and just doing what you can really, really quick style. This one's got a little bit more meat to it, a little bit more strategy, and it takes a little bit longer, but not that much longer. And it also it switches it up based on the number of players, whether it be the last ring at 12 cards from the bottom or 24 in a two player game. We had a lot of fun playing this game. And I don't know if it was just because we kept going back and forth and having these silly situations happen or whether it was just because of the enjoyability amongst the, the crowd of people we played with because they were all drinkers. I personally am not that much of a drinker, but I still really, really enjoyed this game. The theme came out very well. I like the strategy. I like the choices you make. And if you like this type of game, if you like a push your luck style game with dwarves and beers, it's something I would definitely suggest taking a look at. Dwarven Beer Fest. Reminds me of that really funny movie, Beer, beer Fest. That, that was good. That was good too. This is good and, and, and so is that one. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. And don't forget to check out the game Dwarven Beer Fest. If you like dwarves and drinking, this might be just the game for you. As well as UnfilteredGamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, giving away Santorini. As well as our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30pm PST. If you're interested in doing uh, live streams with us, it's a community thing. We have fun. We give away games. It's games like this that you see played every Wednesday you'll like it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I look forward to not doing what I normally do. Instead, I'm just gonna read some of these beer, uh, these dwarven beer names, and, and it'll just cut off when I when I finish. Halfling Honey Wine, Dragon Breath Chaser, Short and Stout, Who Ate All the Pies, Wurza's Glory, Willow the Whiskey, and Lemon and Slime Shandy. You select the your favorite down below in the comments. I think I would go with lemon and slime. That sounds appealing.